Hey, Sagittarius. So this is your love reading for the month of February 2019. Um, this is for Sagittarius singles, couples, and then for those in undefined relationships. So it's on again and off again. Maybe it's not Facebook official. Maybe you just started dating, but you don't know for sure if it's exclusive or not. Um, maybe it's polyamorous. Maybe it is a third party kind of situation where, you know, uh, you are in a relationship with your wife, but also your side piece, or maybe you are the side piece, whatever, no judgment, that part's for you. So your each person or each situation's piece's um, timestamp is going to be in the description box below, so you can just skip right to your section. But then also, if you're in that undefined kind of space, it might be helpful for you to watch all three sections, just because Oftentimes, there's going to be pieces in the single portion that will help you as well as the coupled portion, but focusing most of your energy on the undefined, okay? So Sagittarius, singles. Okay, so in the recent past, it's kind of like, oh man, I don't want to make decisions. I don't want to make decisions about how I'm going to move forward, if I even want to move forward and find a new partner. I don't want, I don't know that like I actually want to necessarily look for a partner or if I'm dating multiple people like have to decide which one is right for me like you just didn't want to make decisions generally in regards to your love life and so they're saying right now though you're kind of wishing you had and it's not this super regretful energy but it's like oh well at least if I would have made a decision I could have made a second decision based on that first decision right so at least if I would have decided like oh I don't know if I want to date um and I would have tried dating, even if, you know, I went out to coffee with four dudes and I didn't like three of them, I'd still have the opportunity to decide whether or not I like this other guy and I wouldn't be single on Valentine's Day, kind of a deal. Um, so what they're saying is, instead of like beating up on yourself and having regret and stuff like that, why don't you decide then, moving through the rest of February, to make sure that you're starting to talk about love? That you're starting to speak lovingly about yourself and to other people and putting the word sort of out there like, hey, I'm open to love. And I think this is something I'm going to pursue. And this is something that I want because if you weren't looking for love, if you didn't want it, you wouldn't be watching this video, okay? Because, I mean, some people really don't. <laughs> some people really don't want it. But I think you do. And so what they're saying here is, okay, so let's say I decide that I'm going to move on from this energy of like indecision or I'm going to move on from my ex or, you know, maybe that's part of the reason why you hadn't decided because you're like, is this just um, me trying to rebound or do I actually want this? And some of those questions don't need to be defined as of now, but you at least want to start thinking about it and you at least want to start talking about the fact that you'd like love somewhere down the road, even if it's in um, a less traditional sort of way. So let's say that you had a relationship and it was like, you know, really intense. You live together, all of this stuff. You move on from it and you're like, okay, moving forward, I do want to experience love and I want to fall in love again, but maybe I don't want to live with a person again. And that's okay. It doesn't matter. You still have to talk about the fact that you want love, that you're looking for it. You need to convince yourself that and you need to be open for it and start like going out and finding it. Um, cause it's not just going to show up at your doorstep. Nobody's just going to like knock on the door and knock, 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 and you open it up and they're like, hey, um, you know, the wind blew uh, past my left eyebrow and I was just like guided to show up at your door and be like, hey, are you by chance looking for love? Because I'm your soulmate. That doesn't happen. <laughs> so anyway, what they're saying is basically if you're not starting to communicate about love, if you're not at least like saying like, hey, this is what I want and starting to talk to people about it or starting to pursue potential dates and things like that, then you're going to end up disappointed by default because nobody's going to show up. Nobody's just going to like, I mean, occasionally that happens where you just like bump into somebody like in a romantic comedy and then you drop your papers on the floor and then they pick them up really fast and there's this moment where you kiss and you like know you're supposed to be together forever. I mean, occasionally that happens, but for the majority of you watching this video, that's not going to happen. It's not. And so you have to decide that you want it and you have to start to express that verbally, okay, to other people, to yourself, 
all that stuff. And so they're saying happily ever after does actually exist for you. And it exists with very little effort on your part. The biggest effort you have to put in there is just expressing it. You know, it could be just saying, hey, guys, on your Facebook, you know, hey, I'm single. And maybe your Facebook um, friends are all family members, right? But maybe one of your family members likes the post and um, they're sitting next to some cute guy or girl or whatever. And um, they're like, oh, who is that saying they're single? And they're like, oh, yeah, like that's my cousin and totally good catch. Actually, you two should hook up. It could be something so simple as that. Completely accidental. Completely like very little effort. I am single. I want love. Even if you don't want it in a very like locked down sort of term. Um, it could just be a journal entry. I want love. Now I'm open to it. Poof. And they're saying like the more that you're able to assert this, the more that you're able to kind of start communicating this, the stronger your chances are that you are going to be able to attract it in the month of February. So that'd be awesome. They're saying a lot of you are feeling um, somewhat unhappy or disillusioned with the concept of love, but you do want to get fucked. You do want to get boned. You want to have fiery, passionate sex, and um, maybe you want to do that to kind of cope with those feelings, but what they're saying is you can, you actually get to have both if you want that. You really do. Lucky. They're saying... So let's be open to change. Let's be open to change in a positive way. Let's be open and say, you know what? Things can change for me. Finished in first place for the school. I don't know. That was really weird. They're talking about my watch is um, talking about Phil Nicholson, the golfer. Hmm. What's that about? A little sidebar here. What's that? Oh, because he's got an optimistic view and he is really good at manifesting things. So we can use him as an example. <laughs> I know nothing about Phil Nicholson. Um, but anyway, they're saying, like, he, leave, he, he leaves the past in the past. <laughs> He's forward-focused. Um, so let's be Phil Nicholson, y'all. Um, yeah, so moving forward, things might be different than you imagined. They might be different than you expected. Maybe your ideas on love have changed, and that's okay, because now things are going to work out better for you and your energy. And they're saying you're not 100% confident that this is the case. Um but you do know that you want love, that you want to show love, that you want to receive love, and that is the big thing here. So what is your action word? And they're saying grace. Grace is your action word. Grace, um, so like kind of, you know, self-forgiveness of your mind, of your body, of the thoughts that you have, you know, all of these things, uh, the body, mind, and spirit combined. So Basically, you know, you can walk through life with a different idea than somebody else has. Maybe you grew up in a very traditional family, and that's not the kind of, you know, like one mom, one dad, they never divorced, like they always worked their stuff out, you know, two kids, and you're like, okay, but that's not what I want for my life. I want to be in an open relationship, and that can be okay. You can still do that with dignity and class, but you have to decide for yourself that it's okay that your ideas are different than somebody else's, right? Okay, so coupled Sagittarius. Okay, more stuff for you than maybe singles. Cool. So in the recent past, you've done a really good job, like when things get tough, of focusing on the positive and um, kind of focusing on your relationship and your partner. Meanwhile, being assertive and kind of keeping that sex drive alive and, you know, the passion and the excitement. And you've been like this kind of person in the relationship where you're like, hey, let's keep things fun. Let's make sure that things are exciting and stuff like that. But right now, you don't necessarily feel like things are in control and you might be a little bit disappointed. Um, maybe your partner let you down or said something hurtful. Maybe they cheated. But whatever the case is, right now, things don't feel super amazing. Um, the good news is, though, that even if you basically just kind of like sit back and do nothing, you're going to end up feeling satisfied with the end result. You're going to get what you want. Now, um, and it's, it's not talking about getting what you want in an earthly sort of way, like in regards to, um, 
Okay, so let's take this to uh, an extreme example. Let's say that that happened and then you left your partner and, um, you know, you're scorned. So you in the divorce proceedings are going to ask for like, you know, tons of money. They're saying like, not like that. You're not going to get what you want, but you will get you what you want in the form of the next person. I, I feel like though, for most Sagittarius, it's nothing that extreme. It's more like, oh, here's like a little sad little blip on the radar. And, um, you know, and it sucks for a second and it was outside of my control. Maybe it was outside of both of our control. Maybe it was your partner's fault, though, let's be honest. Um, and, but, you know, it, it it's kind of like moving forward, the focus isn't on the energy of things or a job or time. It's more about just, like, waiting. You do nothing. You wait things out. Things get better. And they actually get a lot better. They get better in all areas. They get better communication-wise with your partner, emotionally, um, in the physical sense, and then also um, in the earthly plane. Like your luck just changes. Things change and things get really awesome in your relationship. And then um, kind of coming out of the end of February, and I feel like this energy kind of continues maybe a good portion of the way into March where it's like new opportunities present themselves in the earthly plane. So, you know, if you're able to just kind of sit back and do nothing, maybe, okay, here's a good example. Maybe you lose your job. You get laid off, okay? And so, you know, it's like, oh, man, that was outside of my control. Budget cuts. Like, I couldn't do anything about that. And now I'm sad. And now I'm sad, like, in my relationship, too, because my partner's gone a lot of the day. And so I'm, like, here feeling sorry for myself, and I'm, like, lonely, and they can't really give me a lot of time. So should you follow the guidance and do nothing, th you know, like, as far as nothing in regards to that sentiment of feeling sad that your, you know, partner is at work and you're sad and lonely at home, should you sit here and do nothing, um... All of a sudden, things move, shift, change. You get a new job. You're getting paid more. Your schedule is exactly aligned with your partner. You have a lot more time for each other, and you're feeling loved and awesome. But should you bitch and complain about it? You created a strain in your relationship? If you tried to force something to change or move when the timing wasn't right, and then all of a sudden you're in the situation where things can be a little bit more difficult. So basically, the guidance for this month is like, in your relationship, when things start to not feel super amazing, do nothing and just wait for that energy to change. Maybe your partner is stressed out and they're causing you a lot of pain like by being snarky. So you could call it to their attention and um, you know, fighting fire with fire, creating more stress for them and potentiating that and just like making shit blow up in your own face. Or you can just sit back and do nothing understanding that like, okay, I'm not gonna let this persist forever. I'm not a doormat. But I'm just going to sit back for the next, like, couple weeks here. And then all of a sudden your partner comes back when things have toned down for them and says, you know what, I'm really sorry. I was a huge asshole. And I, it is my mission, you know, the end of February all the way through mon March to just make you feel like the most loved and cherished human being on the planet because you are to me. And then awesome, everything's better. You're emotionally connecting better. Your communication is better, you know whatever issue they had, like with the um, earthly stuff, with money, with job schedule, work-life balance, you know, maybe your car breaks and just creating stress, whatever that is, it kind of just resolves itself. And then it, that all actually gets better too. They can take a deep breath and just really more focus on you. You guys can focus on each other. And like, honestly, whatever's happening is creating this sort of a, um, it's creating a situation in which new better things come in their place, like new opportunities. So let's say that you did lose your job, right? You got laid off. Okay, well then all of a sudden somebody says, hey, we remember um, you know, working with you when you were with this company. We heard they did a bunch of layoffs. Are you interested in coming and working with us? Because we really enjoyed our experience with you. We're willing to pay you um, you know, 25% more than they did and less hours. Hell yeah. Thank goodness you got laid off, right? Stuff like that. Okay, what else for coupled Sagittarius in February? They're saying, yeah, um, 
So there are going to be moments for sure in February where you're feeling a little bit depressed. You're feeling really sad. You're feeling sorry for yourself. But just kind of remember that these are very, very temporary feelings and not to dive too deep into those. They're saying like, you know that. You know that this is temporary and you're not the type who's like inclined to lie to yourself about that and sort of wallow. Um, but this is going to be easier for you to kind of navigate if you can better establish or like... Um, or grow your relationship with the spiritual realm, no matter how you do that, whether it's through yoga, through tarot, through prayer, nature walks, whatever. How we, however you personally connect to your intuition, meditation, it's going to be challenging for you to strengthen that this month, but it's very, very beneficial for you. They're saying this is going to be the place in which new insights come for you. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention also that if you are thinking about moving in with a partner um, or selling your home and moving somewhere else together, this is a very good month for that. Um, okay, so anyway, it's going to be challenging to think about how things work out, but understanding that you can't control everything and that new ideas will come through that spiritual connection is very important. And they're saying it's also challenging to understand that things from the past – yeah, they happen and we learn something, but they're not necessarily predestined to repeat themselves. It's not the situation now. Just because something worked out historically one way or another doesn't mean that this is going to be the outcome again or even in the future. And you know that, but it's just like kind of like believing it and remembering it is going to be very important for you this month. Okay. And then I want to give you like an action word for your relationship. And they're saying achievement. Um, acknowledge and appreciate the value of all of your achievements. And so, like, you definitely should be patting yourself on the back, you know, even when you end up disappointed for all of the things that you're doing right. But also, like, to what led you to this point. And, like, if you're really, really able in your relationship to kind of just sit back and do nothing and just kind of, like, let things sort of simmer and resolve on their own, that is something that you want to be really proud of. Um... Because you do have this tendency to want to just, um, you know, kind of go, okay, I'm going to avoid pain. I'm just going to push this away. And I am going to very much take control of this situation and create joy and pleasure and harmony for myself. But in this specific situation, the way that you want to do that is by hands off. And so it is definitely something we're celebrating. If you're able to do that, you're just like, yeah, I did the right thing. I followed my intuition. <laughs> Yay. Um, that's what you want to be doing this month. And they're saying, um, you know, remember that this Empress energy of like being in control and being held on this pedestal and like being very radiantly you where people admire you and they look up to you does not always necessarily depend on you working hard. Sometimes the hardest work that you have to do is to learn to be hands off and let things kind of work themselves out. In this month, this is the case for your relationship. And you know, even if you're feeling down for a second, you're going to be way back up here, like up higher, you know, feeling more joyful than you have recently. And you know, like in a long time, actually, you're going to be like on top of the world, should you be able to really follow this to a T, but it is going to be challenging to really dip into that intuitive energy that we all have so try to establish that connection the best way that you can and new doors of opportunity will open for you and a lot of joy and happiness comes in your relationship so those of you who are undefined so okay <laughs> this is cute okay so basically it's like okay this is undefined um it's kind of like not attached, but at least I'm not attached to like a shitty situation and I'm not so worried about it. Now, though, it's kind of like, I do want love, though. I can't lie. Like, I do want this. Like, if I said I didn't before, if I was like, hey, I don't really want to be attached to anyone. Like, at the time, I wasn't lying to myself. But like, now, if I say I don't now, maybe I am lying myself to a little, a little bit. Like, things move and shift and change. You know, we're totally different people. Our priorities are completely different between 20 and 30. You know, when you're 20 years old, what you want in a relationship is, like, somebody who can take you on fun dates and looks hot. When you are 30, you're like, oh, I want somebody I can have, like, a conversation with. And, um, you know, somebody who supports what it is that I desire 
for my own independent self. But back then it's just like, I just, I want to have sex with a hot person, <laughs> you know, I want to get drunk on the weekends. And I'm not saying everybody's that shallow, but what I am saying is priorities definitely shift and change in all areas of our life each decade, right? And so I forget what my point was. Oh, so yeah, my point is, is it's okay to say, hey, I know that where we were before, this is what I said and how I felt and it was true at the time, but now I do really want love. And so if if love to you means commitment, you're going to have to ask for that. Um, and maybe it doesn't for you and that's okay. Uh, but it's just saying like, hey, I'm putting it out there that I I want love and I'm going to show you love and, you know, whatever. So they're saying you really – um the, the further that February kind of progresses as it chugs along, the more that you're going to understand, if this doesn't resonate for you right away, that this is actually the case. And the more you're going to start thinking about what is it that I cherish? What is it that I desire? What is it that I truly love? And you truly love love. You truly love people. You truly love being nurturing and being in a loving relationship instead of one of like, oh, non-attachment, which is great for a while, is how you get to really experience that a lot more frequently and with a lot more intensity, okay? So what else is up for those in undefined relationships? They're saying things just kind of seem out of balance and you might be a little bit disappointed, but focus on the positives and really be assertive about that concept about wanting love and being open to love. And, you know, whatever this other person says might not feel very fair to you or they might say, hey, you're not being fair because you said this was going to be a purely physical relationship, no strings attached, and now it's changing. You're a hypocrite. And you're like, no. People change. And so if you're not on board with that, if you're not open to that, that's okay. Because you know what? I'll just move on and I'll be open and honest that now this is what I want. People change their mind all the time. If you always loved that hideous jacket with shoulder pads, if you never changed your mind about it, you would have been wearing that same jacket for what is it, like 30 years now? Like, come on. It's normal that people change. The only thing that's constant is change. And so they're saying, don't worry that you're not manifesting the things that you want. Don't worry that you don't always get to control everything. Don't worry that this is maybe not exciting to have to communicate this stuff with other people. But do know that you're going to get exactly what you want, whether you get it in the way that you expect or not is, you know, variable, but you are going to get exactly what you want. You're going to feel very satisfied with the outcome of things. And you might not be able to see that practically kind of laying its um, path out for you straight out the gate, but it is going to come and it might come in an unexpected way, maybe in a very expected way. But what they're saying is that a lot of you are going to kind of have to walk away from former you, from for former priorities and motivations and you know, things like that, desires, and walk towards something new and do it with a lot of enthusiasm, passion, and excitement. So it's saying, okay, yeah, that used to be me. I used to want to just like be wild and free. But now, I mean, that was great. I still love that person. That person's still sort of, you know, in me. But now I want something different. And that's okay. And that's normal. And that's good. And, you know, even if it doesn't feel good for you, even if you don't like it, it's still good for me. It's still what I need. It's still what I want. And I can be excited about that. Even though, you know, maybe that means that we have to somehow separate because we're no longer aligned. That's okay. Because now it's putting me in the path of the person who's going to be aligned with me where, you know, I can experience more of what I want, more of what I value, what more of what I prioritize, which is like these loving, generous, like, um, cherished emotional connections and energies. You're a very nurturing and generous person. And so it's important to you to be able to have someone to love and nurture. So if you don't already have a child, for example, you might want to put all of that onto a partner. And if you're in something that's not exclusive, that's going to be hard, right? Because otherwise you're going to feel used. Um, you're going to start to feel resentful over time. So there's that. Um, what is your action word? Passion. 
Okay, so raise yourself to your fullest height and join in on the dance. Getting excited about what is next, whether it works out the way that you anticipated or hoped for, or whether it's kind of like a wild journey um, and you just end up there, understand that it's going to be exciting and you're excited to get there and be passionate because it's saying, we had that wish card over and over, whatever it is that you're desiring, you will have it. You will. You'll end up satisfied, but it does require some excitement and enthusiasm to kind of put you on that path, to move towards it, okay? So that is February. I love you so much, and I'll see you in March. Thanks so much for watching this video and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20-minute video uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!